this p to the negative 3 halves get, will get canceled, and you'll get a bound which is an absolute constant. And then you have that this each of these integrals are bound ij is less or equal than ap an absolute constant c prime. You take the pr product of powers, so aj squared uh, sums up, and they sum up to 1. So the proof is finished as soon as you have the bound on the characteristic function. So how to obtain such a bound? The upper line is very easy. This is just Parseval's identity. So, first of all, the, me the measure of uh, t such that the absolute value of phi xj of t is greater or equal than s uh, is by Markov or Chebyshev uh, less or equal than the norm of phi x to L2 squared over S squared. And we have to estimate the L2 norm of the characteristic function. But for this, we have Parseval that this is uh, 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 the squared norm of the density function. And the squared L2 norm is bounded by the product of L infinity norm and L1, nor uh, sorry, in Parseval's identity, we have coefficient 2 pi. And L1 norm. L1 norm of any density is 1, and L infinity norm is the maximal density. And we assume that the maximal density is 1, so this is 1. And so I have 2 pi over S squared, which is claimed. So this is a complete triviality. Uh, the proof of the main part is also very simple, but it required an idea, and this idea belongs to Hallas, who turned it into a powerful method of proving small ball probability estimates. In this case, in continuous density, it's absolutely elementary. So let me um, let me show you this idea. We will use a, a calculus inequality that for any x real and for any l natural, the absolute value of sine lx is less or equal than l absolute value of sine x. OK. Now let's look at the characteristic function. Phi x j of t. This is the expectation of the exponential of i x j t. And let's take the, absolute, the squared absolute value. One way to take the squared absolute value is to take an independent copy of xj, say uh, xj prime, and multiply it by the exponential of negative i xj prime t. So xj prime is an independent copy of xj. And this is the exponential of i 
x j minus x j prime t, and let me call this, say, x tilde. And x tilde is a symmetric random variable, which is great because then I can pass to the real calculations from complex. So this is the, exponential, the expectation of the cosine of uh, x tilde t, or this is 1 minus twice expectation of sine x tilde t over 2 squared. And let me call the right-hand side mm. 1 minus psi of t. Okay. And then by changing the variables, We get, we get that uh, the measure of t such that phi x of t is greater than s is the same as the measure of t, so, uh, sorry, uh, to prove that the measure of this is less or equal than c square root of 1 minus s squared is the same as proving that the measure of all t such that psi of t is less or equal than y squared is less or equal than y, uh, c y. Just uh, I take y being 1 minus s squared. OK. So this is what we have to prove. And actually, we know this for a reasonably large y. Uh, say, if y0 is uh, I don't, uh, reasonably large, I don't uh, know, say, three quarters, then we know this result. Because I can translate it backwards. And uh, if y is three quarters, this is a constant number. And instead of this estimate that we do not know, I can use the upper line. This is a constant. So for a fixed y0, I am fine. So holds four. And now I, I have to make y smaller than y0. Let's, uh, let's see how to do it. First, I'll uh, let L be a natural number. And then I want to. Uh, estimate the measure of all t's such that psi of t is less or equal than y0 over l squared. Okay. l squared goes to the left hand side, and uh, I have l squared psi of t, but psi of t is a uh, sine expectation of sine squared. And so I can use this calculus inequality and write that this is bounded by the measure of all t such that uh, psi of l t is less or equal than y 0 squared. But uh, Lebesgue measure is scalable, so this is 1 over L times the measure of all t's such that psi of t 
is less or equal than y0 squared, and this is less or equal than cy0, uh, cy0 over l, and I proved it for all po uh, such points, y0 over l, and of course the general case follows by easy interpolation. And we are completely done with one-dimensional case. What about multidimensional case? Again, it splits into two parts. Uh, so let me consider the multidimensional case. Rank P equals D, and for the multidimensional case, I have uh, that the projection P can be written as the sum J from 1 to N, A J squared U J U J transposed, where A J is the norm of P E J and U J is uh, the vector P E J normalized. Okay. Uh, I assume that uh, the norms of the projections of all coordinate vectors are non zero because otherwise we can throw this uh, coordinate vector from the decomposition. All right, and then there are two cases. There exists a, uh, a j such that a j is greater or equal than one half, and for all j, so a j is less or equal than one half. And uh, let me start with the former hard case, case two. In this case, we would do precisely the same as uh, we did in the one dimensional case. We will uh, use Fourier transform or characteristic functions, and we will write we will write the characteristic function of p x of t. This time t is in R d as. Uh, uh, the product of the expectation of exponential of i t uh, i sorry a j inner product t and u j. So everything goes like in one dimensional case, but we are missing the next step. Helder wouldn't work here because AJs now are summable not to one, but uh, AJ squares are summable not to one, but to D. Fortunately, there, uh, uh, there is a kind of a Helder inequality which will allow us to carry precisely the same proof, but to find it, you have to dig in the same source, in geometry. And this is Braskem-Lieb inequality. So uh, if we have uh, this decomposition, I'll, for, uh, I'll give the formulation of Keith Ball who used brass complete in many problems in, uh, in geometry. So if we have this decomposition, then for any positive functions f j, 
the integral over R D of the product F J uh, to uh, to the A J to the negative two of uh, T U J D T is less or equal than this Helder term J to N of the integrals of over the real line of F J of X dx, the integral raised to the power negative a, j. This is an amazing inequality. Uh, just a, a few trivial examples. One situation, if, uh, if, when, uh, if p is an identity, then uj's are form an orthonormal basis, all AJs are one, and what we see here is Fubini's theorem. The second example, if all FJs are Gaussian densities, then if you take uh, these uh, uh, sorry, it, it should be positive a, a, aj squared. Uh, no. Right. Uh, if you take uh, the, the product of the Gaussian densities, plug in this inner, these inner products, put aj squared inside, you get this identity. And again, Braskem Blib inequality turns into equality. Uh, the original proof of Braskem Blib was rather long, but it is uh, quite elementary that you use only one deep theorem, namely Brun Minkowski inequality in convex geometry. Uh, later, Frank Bart. Give, uh, gave a very short and nice proof of a brass complete based on measure transportation. And even uh, later, just a few years ago, uh, Bar at uh, uh, Cordillera Scan and Marais found uh, a proof of brass complete using Brownian motion. So if you are equipped with this brass complete uh, Helder type inequality, everything carries on literally as uh, in the one dimensional case. You get the same product of one dimensional integrals, and the estimates for the one dimensional integrals are ready. So this deals with the non trivial case. What remains is of a former trivial case, which turns out to be uh, quite non-trivial in the multidimensional setting. If you condition, uh, the reason is that if you condition on all other variables instead, uh, except of j, you get uh, uh, the bound which, uh, uh, which is just linear, you don't. So uh, le let me reformulate it to make clear wha where the problem is. Actually, in a multidimensional case, instead of uh, proving the bound for the density, we can, uh, we can reformulate it for the uh, Levy concentration function. Uh, 
and if y is a random vector in R d, I denote L of y and say S is a positive or epsilon is a positive parameter. Uh, L of y epsilon is the supremum over y small in R d of the probabilities that y is close to the point y small up to an epsilon. And uh, in the language of Levy concentration function, I can write that f the supremum, or say the L infinity norm of f y is less or equal than, say, m is uh, the same as uh, for any epsilon positive, the Levy concentration function of, sorry, here it is y capital, y capital epsilon square root of d, which is important, is less or equal than a constant times m to the power d. To get it, you just integrate uh, one direction, you integrate the density over the ball. In other direction, you use the Lebesgue differentiation theorem. And so what happened if we fix all coordinates but one and consider uh, y to be the projection of x? We get a linear bound on the Levy concentration function. And we need the bound to the power, uh, no, uh, epsilon m, of course. We need a power epsilon to the power d. So we have to do something more involved. And actually, in case one, the proof proceeds by induction. But let me, I, I will not be able to perform this induction, but let me at least show the, how the induction step should, uh, should look like and say some words about it. So if we assume that for any projection Q of rank D minus one and for uh, for any say Z in uh, Q R M the probability that the norm of Q X minus Z less or equal than epsilon is less or equal than C epsilon or say M epsilon to the power D no, not C epsilon. We have to multiply by the square root of the radius of the ball. The ball is d minus one dimensional. And this is less or equal than uh, epsilon m to the power d minus 1. And then we have to prove uh, that for any y in p, r, n, the probability that the norm 
be x minus y, 2 is less or equal than epsilon square root of d is less or equal than epsilon m to the power d. And this shows why this induction is delicate. We have to uh, uh, keep m the same. And here, uh, you, uh, this is an uh, elementary calculation, but it should be done accurately. You condition on some variables and then estimate uh, conditional probability accurately. This is all elementary, but you have to keep track of everything, including that the fact that here you have square root of d y and s one. Here you have square root of d. This is this also is going to play a role. I presented the detailed calculation in the lecture notes. Right now I have about three seconds left, so. I wouldn't do it and stop here.